What's happening, guys? So as you know, Full Swing is launched on Netflix, and I was hook, line, and sinker with the Formula One Drive to Survive. So the same guys have just made the Full Swing documentary series behind the scenes on the PJ Tour. But what a year to pick it, because half the dudes left and went to live. So can't really describe how awesome the show is so far, but there's also a lot of things I don't like about the show, as you probably expect. But there's a lot of really interesting tidbits. They have a really cool uh, takes from the majors, uh, really cool behind the scenes stuff, but at the same time, I wish they would have done a little bit deeper on some things, and also slash, they kind of, I think, browbeat us with what a cut is throughout the whole series. So I've only watched the first five episodes, so I'm not gonna spoiler anything for anybody who hasn't watched it yet. I'm just gonna kind of give you some things to look forward to, and just kind of want to hear what you have to say below. So if you've watched it, comment below. So if you haven't seen it, don't go down in the comments. You might see something you don't want to see. But comment below, tell me what you thought, what you liked. There's definitely some neat stories amongst these players they've chosen to follow. And I know I have my favorite episode already in mind. And let's talk about it and get into this a little bit more. So basically, I've cracked into five episodes. I, uh, I tried desperately to binge watch the whole thing and could not make it. Uh, so... Uh, you know, 3 a.m. is not, not a daylight hour that I can uh, function well the next day. So shut it down, watch five episodes, we'll, and hopefully I can watch the last three and do a second part on this and kind of give you a little bit of my insights. But in the first five episodes, there's really interesting um, perspectives on some of the tour players. And so we'll just kind of break out. And like I said, I'm not going to go into any details of each episode, so I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just going to tell you the overall gist of things I like, things I didn't like. Um, the first episode was a Jordan Justin episode. So... I think that's probably the best choice they could have done to open up the whole docu-series was, here's the thing on Jordan and Justin, their relationship, how they act like bros, and come to find out, I was right, Justin Thomas's potty mouth is prevalent. <laughs> he has a mouth on him. Uh, he makes me look calm, surprisingly. Uh, so he uh, is, is entertaining on that front, you know, as he's gotten in trouble before for saying uh, things on the golf course, hot mic uh, well, now he's mic the whole time and still slings things out there. Uh, but it's in a Netflix series, so I guess it's, so I guess it's kosher. The, um, the second episode was about Kepka and the struggles he's had this past season. And very interesting limelight into his uh, journey this past year, especially with signing off to live. So, again, none of this golf news stuff is, you know, spoilers. It's just what they're talking about in the episodes. Um, you know, Jordan's epi or Justin's episode was a little bit more about him winning the PJ Championship. Uh, so again, not a spoiler. If you watch golf, you knew that. So the the first two episodes were pretty entertaining. But what drives me nuts, and it started out kind of cool because they teased the live thing at the beginning of the first episode, and they teased it again at the end. So it makes you think they're going to talk about it. Well, the first through two episodes, they teased it at the beginning and the end of each episode, and you're just like, can we talk about this, or are we just going to keep just throwing it out there that you know, uh, the live stuff is hanging out in the open. So kind of a, kind of an annoying thing throughout the course of the first couple episodes. So by the third episode, you get into this Poulter story, and that's kind of an interesting one because Poulter, you think Ryder Cup. You think um, a legacy of match play and European Tour and PGA Tour player um, who's past his prime, and, you know, maybe that's a little harsh to say. He's definitely older on the other side of the hill at 46, I believe is what he said in the video. Um, and his take on why he left for live. Very interesting, very honest um, opinions about it. And I think that was um, a pretty interesting insight as well. You're seeing some of these guys make the moves they're making. Um, so that was, that was pretty entertaining. The fourth episode is without a doubt my favorite. Um, it's about Joel Damon and his journey. Very emotional journey. Um, and quite possibly the most negative player on tour. So that was very interesting to hear the things that he says to himself while competing and in amongst the tournament. And it's, it's bonkers. I've, I know tour players can be kind of negative and you know, say things to themselves. I can't believe I did that and whatever. This guy is next level and it's, it's known. But he uh, has a great relationship with his caddy who's it's very entertaining to watch. And it's just a heart, heartthrob story. So if, if you're going to not watch any episodes, but you just wanted to pick one so far through the first five I've seen, the, the only episode I tell you to watch is the Joel Damon one in episode four. 
And then in the fifth episode that I've seen was the Matt Fitzpatrick, Dustin Johnson episode, uh, highlighting Fitzpatrick's win at the U.S. Open, being a USAM, U.S. Open champion at the same facility at uh, the Country Club. And then Dustin Johnson's decision to go to live, who, again, brutally honest as to why he made that move. So overall, the episodes I've watched really like the storylines. Interested in how they picked the Fitzpatrick, Dustin Johnson to share a video together. Probably would have thought they would put Kepka and Dustin together because they hang out so much. Um, so that was kind of an interesting little move. But let's get into some of the things that I can't stand about the series so far and some of the things that I've actually really liked about the series so far. So not to be a negative Nancy, so let's just get into the good stuff, right? The things I really liked is that you get some pretty cool behind-the-scenes access of the daily struggle, the life off the tr on the road, the family stuff that they're going through. Um, so that's pretty little insight. You know, when you look at the drive to survive stuff, you know, they make it a little bit more about the the team and the stuff that went into the car and in the races. And, you know, what they did here was kind of highlight the majors. Um, and so you got to see some really cool behind the scenes stuff that happened at the majors that were not on television. So some hot mics between the player and the caddy, some inappropriate things that are being yelled at the at the players um, from the from the ropes. Um, you know, poor Fitzpatrick took a shellacking apparently at the U.S. Open. Um, so the you know from that perspective, it was pretty interesting to see some behind the scenes stuff. So I really enjoyed that, and I really enjoyed the cinematography of how they portrayed those tournaments with the wins and the the feelings and you know and all that. I mean, it was really, really well done. Um, so I really enjoyed that stuff. And, you know, I think it was interesting to kind of watch some of these players and interact with their kids, interact with their buddies, um, you know, and how they're, you know, just like one of the bros a lot of the times. Um, so, and you kind of see that if you follow these guys on social media, you kind of get the taste of it. So I think that's kind of also a little bit tough is like it didn't really feel too different than how you see them interact on social media. Um, but it was pretty interesting. And then... You know, the last thing I really like is like they had Sean Foley, who I'm a big fan of. I think he's a great dude, really smart dude, very insightful pro um, co and tour coach. And you know his insights from working with these players and their emotions, their feelings, their uh, struggles. You know, and, and you get to hear from him a little bit. Kind of lays the groundwork out from a coach to a coach perspective. I really kind of enjoyed that. Um, so those are kind of like the highlights of the things that I, I really enjoyed about the series. Um, so, you know, let's talk about a little bit about what I didn't like. So it may or may not come as a surprise to you that I do kind of enjoy this live development. Um, I'm not a live sympathizer. Um, I do, you know, understand people's struggles with the Saudi money. I'm not, a, you know, aloof to that. But at the same time, I think the change was good for the game of golf. And so throughout the first five episodes, they've teased this thing, but they haven't really just come out and just addressed it. And I think they paint live in a very dark manner. Um, and they, and I, you know, again, the series is supposed to be about the PJ tour. So I'm like, I'm not, you know, confused on that. So if they're going to paint the live in the dark series, it is what it is. But, you know, just, let's just get out and talk about it a little bit better than they have been. I think they, they're, they're low balling live. And again, this is all while it's happening. So people are in shock still of like how much this, this thing is blowing up. And, you know, I think that's, that's an interesting little hot take. You know, they had Manahan have a, you know, he didn't have like a sit down part of the interview, but they had, you know, highlights from him in press conferences talking about PJ Tour stances. And you just kind of sit there and shake your head like, God, this guy is just arrogant. And then, you know, one of the, one of, so, you know, that's, that's about all I want to say about Liv. And, and, you know, again, we'll see what, how, we'll see what happens at the end of the series when I get to the last three episodes, see if it really kind of comes together. And, the, do they really address this live thing and what the future of this looks like between live and PGA? Hopefully, I think they need to come together and, and, and heal the wound and, and do something together. I don't know if it'll happen with who's in charge on both sides. The other side of the thing that drove me nuts was they browbeat you to death about what a 36 hole cut is. Like, it would be the equivalent of in Drives or Survive saying, if you don't come in first, you're not the winner. Like, yeah, okay, we get it. You got to win the race to win the race. Like, <laughs> You know, or like, you know, after the first couple episodes, you get the idea, like, only a certain number of guys get points. In the, in the tour series here, every episode, they have a different reporter say, after 36 holes, if you don't, inside the cut line, you don't play the weekend, you don't get paid. 
like say that in the first episode, be done with it. Like I could appreciate in the first episode they explain what a birdie is, a par, uh, eagle, a bogey, and they explain the cut, and I was like, okay, great. And then every episode after, it's like this is what a cut is, and I'm like, holy crap! Uh, like it was just it was like, just like annoying. <laughs> so I don't understand that part. But you know, the the reporter side of this equation, you know, I think. You know, Rappaport has a big role in it, and that was, you know, entertaining. And I forget the other gentleman's name who was in there is pretty good. But the two girls, you know, I don't think they're getting their fair shake on the reporting side of, you know, what they do for the golf world. Um, so I would like to have seen them include a little bit more things that they had to say about what the, their experiences, what they've reported on, stuff like that. Um, and then they have Brandel Chambly in there, which <sighs> I'm sorry. It's not that I don't like the guy. I don't like the guy. what the guy plays on TV. Like I don't think that's the same person. Brandle TV is not the same as Brandle in real life from what my experiences have been. And uh, the funny part about it was they list Brandle as a former PJ Tour player. And with like a 98% confidence interval, I'm pretty sure everybody here has not seen Brandle hit a PJ Tour shot um, and will not know him as the PJ Tour player, but more of the Golf Channel analyst who plays devil's advocate for just about everything. So... Could have done without the Brandle stuff because he poo-poos on live, and it's just like, for Pete's sake, man, just let it go. Um, so that was a little bit of frustrating spots there. But overall, I think it was a pretty good little episode. Let's wrap this baby up. So put a bundle on this thing. I think it's great for golf what this show is all about. I mean, it the Drivers Survive put huge numbers behind Formula One with their five seasons or four seasons they have. I think they have a fifth one coming out. Um, you know, and their interest in Formula One. I hope this does the same thing for golf because we need that needle to keep pushing, to keep people playing, keep people interested in the game because Tiger's going to, you know, eventually not play. And we got to find a way to keep people interested in the game without Tiger Woods. Um, so I think more shows like this are awesome. I'm really excited about it. I hope there's even like a live split off branch to this series and there's a PJ Tour version, a live tour version. They do a little bit more of a deep dive on live. Um, yeah, as long as it's around, which I mean, there's plenty of money there. But the overall synopsis of this is like I'm I'm thrilled. I want my kids to watch. Um, they fell asleep and that's when I started watching it. But you know, I want them to pay attention to this because it really shows some, you know, what what really goes on. And I think it's good for the game. And I think it's good for kids who want to try to make it and realize how hard it is and how good these guys are and um, how you know when they struggle, they struggle. You know, like they have the same. I hear the same things that came out of their mouths on this show or things I hear in this room talking to junior golfers, uh, college golfers. So, you know, they all deal with the same struggle. So I think overall this thing is uh, a, a net positive. I give it like a B plus, A minus. Um, like I said, there's a few things I probably done a little differently. Uh, but overall, I think it's an awesome series. So let me know what you think down below. Comment what you like. What was your favorite episode? And I can't wait to finish this thing. And I'll make a second part and see how this thing wraps up. So till then, Coach, out.